I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the Foundation. we got Market Outlook. we got some really crazy yeah. things going on right now. Let's talk about that. This has been two weeks since we've been doing this, uh, since we did this last time. And we didn't really talk too much about the market last time. We didn't talk about ETFs. And I know the kind of the whole Twitter space has talked about ETFs, but now it's, we have some hindsight we can kind of look at and kind of have some ideas of, of what we think those are, how those are affecting or what else is affecting Bitcoin at the moment. I have my opinion. Do you guys want to speak up on For that? For sure. So something I've said since early March is that you have Bitcoin cycle that for now have always been something that we can really rely on. And what we see um, actually every time is that you have the bear market, Bitcoin goes down, and then once it starts to recover, it goes back to the all time high. And then after that, it has some kind of hesitation before actually consolidating for months before attacking the actual new all time high that we're all waiting for. And some speculation came about ETFs being able to have some major impact on that cycle, uh, potentially avoiding this whole consolidation phase, uh, going way up. But in reality, we don't really know uh, what it will bring. It does open the market to some new actors, obviously. However, we don't really know how they will stabilize the market or if they will increase the volatility. I know you also have some uh, pretty strong opinion about that, Rob. So what do you think about those things? <laughs> I don't think they're earth shattering. I just think that we have now opened the market to people who don't want to get into crypto. Um, yeah. So, yeah. and people like, like I have uh, IRAs um, and now I can put those IRAs into crypto sort of right through the, through the ETFs and the ETFs need to buy and sell according to what their clients are buying and selling. So when I buy some of whatever ETF that is Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin ETF, they got to buy some Bitcoin. So now there's lots of people who have access to the, the, to affecting the Bitcoin price and lots of people who are not like crypto people who are not used to the way it's volatile. And honestly, yeah. I, I think there's going to be a lot of people who are scared. And when the price goes down, like we're used to price going down, you know, 20% <laughs> and we're like, yeah, it'll be, we have a roller later. coaster. Yeah, these people are terrified when something drops 3%. And yeah. so what I, what I think is we're going to see more volatility as we go forward, not less, as the ETF market becomes a larger part of the overall Bitcoin ownership. I, I, um, I, I like right now, it may not be so much. Yeah, I, th I think that the ETFs um, will create more volatility. Uh, I think that that's, well, again, everything we're stating is speculation. There are those yep. who will state that it's going to bring stability. And I just cannot for the life of me see that happening, knowing how those markets work and knowing how um, the crypto value is still very emotional, right? Um, so the speculation is based upon that emotion. And those kinds of uh, you would call them no coiners, I guess. Those kinds of people who are not really involved in crypto, who may want something part of their portfolio, who have sort of to build the stomach for this kind of a market, uh, mm -hmm. for lack of a better yeah. statement, yeah, right? I, I mean, you got to you got to get used to that roller coaster, and it also isn't necessarily, in my opinion, really bringing people who are wanting to know more about crypto and the freedoms it brings. Obviously, I'm sort of the purist here um, in, in, in the bunch. And if you're participating in anything on paper, whether it's gold on paper or whether it's silver on paper or whether it's Bitcoin or for that matter, if it happens, Ethereum on paper, that's all it is. It's just paper. You don't really have the asset. You don't I, even I understand or respect the asset. Yeah, I, I just heard you say something that just reminded me of another thing I just saw. I don't know if you guys saw this, but somebody lost everything. In his tweet, he was saying, you know, I've been in crypto since whatever date. Maybe it was 2017. Maybe it was 2015. I don't know. Yeah. But he had lost all his money because he got liquidated gambling with Pepe coin. Uh, and I'm like, I'm like, you're not in crypto. That's correct. <laughs> you know, you're yeah. right. So <laughs> there are people who play around with crypto and are not invested into this becoming a thing, understanding how it works. They're just gambling with crypto on an exchange, just like anybody else is speculating here and there. I mean, he's been doing it with crypto, 
And I just, I mean, the guy got liquidated yeah. and like, that's something you can avoid. It was hard for me to understand that he literally lost everything. Later, he said, I think it was Binance was nice to him and helped him a little bit. But yeah, that's the difference between kind of being in crypto, the way we understand it, the way actually I think most people who are in crypto understand and what I'm nervous about the ETF market being. I do think though, as the overall adoption of owning some crypto or owning Bitcoin gets huge, like we're not even close to that yet. It gets huge. I think that's when we start seeing stability, stability, not, not now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's all about use case, right? That's mm-hmm. the key thing. The more use case we have and the more adoption along with that use case, along with that ownership, along with those speculators, along with those day traders, because that's kind of what what I see when I hear that is people playing in those markets. They're not really in the market. They're just wanting to get in, ride the gains, and then get out into fiat or turn it into something else to get out into fiat. When we have more utility features and functions uh, along with all of those things because those people are still part of crypto we should still welcome them as part of crypto Uh, they'll always be part of crypto it's just not maybe where i am in crypto and you guys are different but anyway it's all about other functions features and utilities not just ownership yeah so you actually introduced the topic that i wanted to go back to because in fact, this is what's paradoxical in that situation is that you want to have Bitcoin adoption. You want people to use more cryptocurrency for mm-hmm. their day, day-to-day transactions. But in reality, uh, most people will never go through the hurdle of you know, managing a Bitcoin wallet and all that. And Bitcoin is all about sovereignty over your funds and over uh, your transaction, the network as a whole. And these ETF are the opposite of that, right? Yeah. But in a way, exactly like the fiat on ramp or off ramp, it is something that is that is required for normal people to actually uh, get totally. in contact with Bitcoin. Um, yeah. Yeah. In reality, yeah. as long as you have to see that now you're using a different technology and you're not just getting the benefits of being sovereign, it will be a difficult path for a lot of people to actually embrace crypto. They'll feel the risk. They will see it's not as easy as the other apps that they have. And so getting some intermediary steps like that, that's a path where every technology matures. It has to go through that. Tons of new ideas come and most of them are garbage, right? But then some of them will succeed and they will be close to the original technology. So things that will be a lot closer to Bitcoin, things that will still be trustless operations and all that, basically the direction that we want to develop, right? And then you will have other things where they try to get closer to the fiat system, right? And ETFs is exactly that. Yeah, I I think it's an overall good. I mean, I think in our goal of people, and when I said adoption before, I sort of meant just holding, even if it's by proxy, like just people being aware, holding some, having some, even by proxy. It's not, I don't mean actually using it for stuff. I just mean like it'll settle out at some point when it's just normal to have some Bitcoin, you know, like it was normal to have some IBM before or whatever, maybe NVIDIA now, you know? (laughs) So um, I think, I think we'll see it then. 